Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Chris there. And for today's quick tip, I want to talk a little bit about MIDI mapping and what to do in a situation where the value of a parameter in live does not match the value of a parameter on your MIDI controller. So if you have something that's MIDI mapped and the two don't match together, there are a few different ways that you can control this and change the way that live behaves in this particular situation. So let's go ahead and try this out. We're going to just use an auto filter with like a filter frequency, something you might want to map to a MIDI controller. And we're going to go ahead and MIDI map that by hitting Command M. And I'm going to map it to this knob down here in the corner. Uh, so now the two of those are now connected. So if I turn the knob here, it's going to be changing the filter frequency right there. So in this situation, so right now you can see if I turn one up and turn one down, you can see they're both changing. And it may be a little hard to see because the lighting in here is a little weird, but you can see hopefully these lights light up. So what happens if I manually with my mouse change the filter frequency and move it down here? So my filter frequency is at 100 hertz, but the value of my knob is still way up here. Right now, if I don't do anything, if I haven't changed any settings, the second that I turn this, it's going to match the value on my MIDI controller. So as soon as I turn this, you can see the value jumps up to 4000 hertz. And then now that they're matching, they move up and down together. So that is the default behavior. As soon as you touch a MIDI controller, it's going to jump to that value. You might not want it, want it to jump to that value, especially if you had if you had this map to like a volume or something. Uh, then your volume will just jump up and get really loud really fast. So we can change that over here in our MIDI preferences. So command comma or control comma to get you to your preferences. And under the MIDI tab, we have this takeover mode. So like I said, in none, it just jumps to that value. Or we can switch to this to pickup. So in pickup, let's do this one more time. I'm going to turn the knob all the way up and then manually turn this down, down here. If I start turning this knob, it doesn't do anything doesn't change anything. And you can see down at the bottom, it gives me a big yellow indicator letting me know that it's waiting till it hits 63 hertz. So once the two match each other, and then it's going to connect them together again. So right now it does nothing. And as soon as I hit 63 hertz, they now match and I can move them up and down together. So pickup mode is going to wait till your MIDI controller matches the value and then just moves up and down like that, which is can be really useful again in live performance if you don't want values to jump around as soon as you turn it up. The third option that you have under this takeover mode is going to be value scaling, which is kind of like a mix between the two. So once again, we're going to turn this all the way up on our MIDI controller and turn it down manually with our mouse. So now if I start turning this down, it's going to slowly move it to the left. It's going to slowly move it in the same direction that I'm going. And then once they hit the same value, now they're the same thing again. So it'll move it a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, depending on which direction you are turning your MIDI controller. And then once they match again, they're just the same again. So those are kind of your three main options here for determining the behavior between your MIDI controller and live. One other cool thing that we can do uh, that is pretty awesome is you can actually send out MIDI messages to controllers. And this won't necessarily work on every controller, but it works here in my situation. So I figured I'd show you. Uh, so we, here we have our MIDI input from our MIDI fighter twister. And here we have our MIDI output to our MIDI fighter twister. And if I turn remote on, that means that if I were to change this with the mouse, the value on the MIDI controller also changes. So if I were to manually move this up and down, again, I don't know how well you can see it with the lighting, you can see hopefully the uh, dots here indicating that the two are moving together, which means that they are always going to be the same thing, which kind of eliminates the situation of needing to worry about, you know, value scaling, pickup or, or none in the takeover modes. So that is it. Hopefully that is useful to you. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that. Uh, if you did, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. I release videos every Tuesday and or every Monday and Thursday, as well as streaming on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, so that's it. And hopefully I will see you again soon.